think since the digital revolution, everything of all the materiality, I would say, become more intangible. So there's a lot of experiences that also affects your way of life. And the industry has turned into the form from products into services. So now the, mo the, the, the important thing basically to, the, the important element that delivers value to a user is basically the use and the experience and not only the thing. So that became a new agenda on design and that's what we call service design. So it's basically how we could orchestrate the different components and dimensions that has to be in place in order to create new experiences that can create value for users and stakeholders. I would say the service design produces briefs of things to do by other designers or other professionals. So we could brief the development of an app or we could brief the development of a space or any kind of touch point that we need to put in place in order for a service to, to be there. There's an acknowledgement that the public problems today are more wicked in the sense that they are complicated. They have inter, how do you say, interconnected causes and, and you don't have a single answer that can actually solve uh, a problem. So governments are trying, most of them are trying to test different kind of epistemologies, so different, different new perspectives that can help them both understand the problem in a different way and also use different tools. And I would say that most of those, both processes and, and, and outcomes of those policies and services will entail coordinating a large amount of stakeholders and people. So I think that's one thing, the wicked problem. That also is, is connected with a second element that I think is very, it, it's a kind of a subset of, of, that, of, of that idea of using collaboration to tackle wicked problems, that is trust. So today, I think the levels of trust in government uh, all over the world, but particularly now in, in, in Europe, and at least in Latin America, where I'm coming from, um, people start seeing that governments are not actually fit for solving public problems. So there's a distance. Mm -hmm. And when there's a rise on, the, on, on private solution to public problems, so governments really need to improve the legitimacy they could have to act. And connected with the previous thing that if we want to use collaboration to tackle this complex problem, we really need legitimacy to act. So we need to improve trust. And I think design could be used as a, a, in a way because it's focused on experiences, on creating kind of collaboration experiences that can fo foster that trust, advancing in transparency perhaps. So you have, I don't know, you, have a, you can use design in order to produce or to enhance transparency, for example, in kind of like governmental action, but also again uh, into producing these interactive environments where you could actually collaborate. The third element, I think, it's it's um, it's a lot to do with um, um, with productivity. So again, uh, it's it's been research and literature kind of shows that when you include people and you focus on experiences when you design a service that's at the end is more efficient in the sense of to really understand where to put resources. Again, I'm not claiming that design is solving all the problems, but those services that have a very intense connection with citizens, if you really try to understand the people needs and what are the experiences that you need to put in place to make something more seamless, that will have an impact in reducing costs. An example of that, for example, again, is like GDS, Government Digital Services here in the UK, the amount of money they have been able to save just focusing on user stories and user needs. The last element, I think, it's this idea of, um, of a new relationship between the private and the public sector um, in the context of government we're talking about to innovate. So we have on the 90s the idea of the public-private partnerships that most of them end up being uh, basically, um, how do you say, that outsourcing of things. So again, having to find private solutions for public problems. And I think now there's a, there's a big trend, uh, which, I, with, 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 which I agree, that it's this idea of like mission-oriented innovation. So when you have, a, and, and climate change and global warming is, is one, one of those things. So it's not just the government who needs to do something in order to tackle, some, to tackle that particular problem. So you need kind of like big coalitions that can be driven by a mission. 
in my experience at least and, and very little what what design can do there again is that since design and innovation and innovation pipelines are so so aligned and again as i said um, the idea of focusing on experiences and, and and users i think design in a way or a design approach to innovation might help visualize uh, how those missions actually look like so in our experience we're using for example a speculative design that is to create future scenarios where you people kind of like imagine what something could look like and then discuss about that and what has to be in place in order to get there so we've also been doing a little work on that we've been working with uh, 10 cities in the north sea region in a pro, pro a project called begin it's blue green social innovation for blue green infrastructure the hypothesis of the project is said that blue green infrastructure is is more expensive is needed but it's more expensive and requires a new approach both for design and maintenance the project says that social innovation that is basically try to incorporate different uh, different stakeholders through a collaborative approaches and changing the relationship between the stakeholders would be a very interesting and productive approach to tackle the challenge of maintenance and design. So what we've been doing, we've been doing kind of three, three things. So the first is about helping civil servants and public managers use these service design tools. And I think this is the matter of this course, basically trying to understand the user, trying to understand their needs, put it in the context of a, of a process, understand it in the complexity of different elements and stakeholders, and then try to prototype a certain kind of solution. The second thing we've been doing is that we've been creating what we call design probes or provocations. So to give you an example, we did a project with Enfield in Kent, and we were looking at, for example, how we could include the younger generations uh, to use public spaces and parks and how they can contribute, for example, for maintaining uh, this. It, in this case, was a was a little lagoon that was in the park. So we, the students created a game that was called Park Frog. So you create uh, a, a little frog that you take care of it and through doing certain activities in this park, you get some points and those points then give you some possibilities of using other amenities. So and the, the underlying element or hypothesis is that an alliance between the council and the school and potential third private parties could help finance this, this loop. So we have an education at component in, in the school, we have the park and we have the game. And through creating this new interaction with the park, potentially our idea is that people will be more aware and more involved uh, with that particular piece of public space. So that's an example. The third element we're doing is trying to wrap up this research uh, and try to really think how we could connect, I would say, the values that nature-based solutions are bringing to, to the city with other kind of policies, in this case, um, health, mental health policies. So there's a lot of research that says that green, green spaces are connected with health and well-being. So now we're doing a third round of projects trying to connect, basically, what are the values that the blue-green infrastructure could bring with other policies so we could explore other kind of modes of finance into the same, um, the same, the same public, uh, public space.